വെൽക്കം ടു എ ടി സി എം ദ എമർജൻസി മെഡിസിൻ ചാനൽ ടുഡേ വി ആർ ഡിസ്കസിംഗ് അബൌട്ട് കോർട്ടിക്കോ സ്റ്റിറോയിഡ്സ് കോർട്ടിക്കോ സ്റ്റിറോയിഡ്സ് ആർ വെരി വൈഡ്ലി യൂസ്ഡ് ഇൻ ക്ലിനിക്കൽ പ്രാക്ടീസസ് കോർട്ടിസോൾ ഈസ് എ ഹോർമോൺ പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ്ഡ് ഇൻ അവർ ബോഡി ബൈ അഡ്രനൽ ക്ലാൻഡ് വിൽ സി ദ ആക്സിസ് ഫോർ ദിസ് സെക്രീഷൻ ഓഫ് കോർട്ടിസോൾ സ്കോളേഴ്സ് ഹൈപ്പോ തലാമിക് പിറ്റ്യൂട്ടറി അഡ്രനൽ ഓർ എച്ച് പി എ ആക്സിസ് is controlled by hypothalamus that stimulate uh, produces corticotrophin releasing hormone it stimulates uh, anterior pituitary and produces adrenocorticotropic hormone or acth that stimulates adrenal cortex and produces cortisol the excretion of cortisol is mainly occurring in the early morning hours so the surge of cortisol release is in the mainly in the early morning hours and whenever your cortisol levels are high it will negative negatively control hypothalamus and anterior pituitary this axis is called as hypothalamic pituitary adrenal or hpa axis that whenever there is a stress cortisol will be released from our body now we will see the actions of glucocorticoids it increases the stimulation of some uh, process in our body and decreases or inhibits some process in our body there are a lot of things we can talk but we are concentrating only few now important action of cortisol is it produces sodium and water retention so sodium control and water control is mainly by cortisol hormone and it decreases or uh, it blocks the immunity of a uh, person or host response to infection will be blocked by cortisol so there are two main actions we should know when we are talking about uh, corticosteroid uh, as a therapy in clinical practice we use cortisol in many uh, conditions like if you see the respiratory we will tell only important uh, indications respiratory conditions like asthma copd interstitial lung disease ards and patients with pneumocystis carinii pneumonia in aids and whenever there is a large rapidly accumulating pleural effusion also we use cort- uh, corticosteroids in patients with uh, uh, lung disease other major conditions are one is nephrotic syndrome in kidney disease and many rheumatological conditions like sle rheumatoid arthritis vasculitis cranial arthritis polymyalgia rheumatica all these conditions we use steroids neurological conditions like whenever there is a intracranial space occupying lesion with edema we use steroid some uh, bacterial meningitis multiple sclerosis uh, neurological vasculitis all these things we use um, uh, corticosteroids and one important condition is adrenal insufficiency that is given as a treatment for adrenal gland failure itself you can get primary adrenal failure that is addison's disease or secondary adrenal failure especially we see in sepsis and tuberculosis where the adrenal gland is infected and produces adrenal failure so these are the common indications but there are lot of other indication we cannot explain all this indication now but it is mainly used as a infl- anti inflammatory drug in uh, inflammatory conditions there are different type of anti inflammatory drugs one is steroid another one is uh, non steroidal uh, anti inflammatory drug or nsaids third one is anti rheumatological drug like uh, uh, disease modifying agents they also produces uh, uh, red- reduction in the immunity now we'll see the different types of corticosteroids which are in practice and they are equivalent doses to uh, glucocorticoids the major drugs are hydrocortisone methylprednisolone prednisolone deflucercort cortisone dexamethasone betamethasone all these things are available all these tablets are available the main drugs which are in use and their uh, duration of action is given in this chart but remember dexamethasone is the one of the most uh, useful drug in clinical practice the dose is 0.5 mg the duration of action is around 72 hours so that is very very important dexamethasone is one of the most commonly used uh, drug in in this group but other drugs like hydrocortisone is used methylprednisolone is used prednisolone is used we can see the dose comparison of doses 20 mg hydrocortisone is equal to 4 mg methylprednisolone that is equal to 5 mg prednisolone 6 mg deflucercort 
25 mg cortisone and 0.5 mg dexamethasone so that is very very important so dexamethasone is one is the, one of the most powerful anti inflammatory drug among this group if you see the injections and tablet we may think that injections will be more uh, efficacy than the uh, tablets but in steroids it is wrong both injections and tablets are equal suppose a patient come with severe asthma if you give oral tablet and injection both are equal the only problem is conditions like sepsis and all when you give tablets it may not be absorbed that is the only issue so oral steroids and injection steroids are having equal efficacy no need to go for an injection when the patient can take a oral tablet now we'll see the relative glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoid potency of each type of steroids so glucocorticoid uh, potency is equal to its anti inflammatory action mineralocorticoid potency is equal to its water and sodium retention so hydrocortisone is taken as a benchmark one one it has got one glucocorticoid and anti inflammatory action and mineralocorticoid action is one if you see all other drug drugs dexamethasone is the most potent anti inflammatory drug it is very cheap comparing with with all other uh, ns uh, steroids but its potency is very very high it has got 30 to 40 uh, glucocorticoid action when comparing with hydrocortisone if you see methyl prednisolone it is only 5 prednisolone it is only 4 betamethasone is 25 dexamethasone has got a maximum potency it has got 30 to 40 percentage when you compare with hydrocortisone so it's a very good anti inflammatory drug and it is very cheap also now before starting steroids in any patients we have to take some precautions precautions are at least take a chest x ray and rule out infections like tuberculosis patient should not have diabetes and when you start a uh, long standing steroids patient can develop steroid, uh, diabetes you have to follow up these patients patients who is having family history of diabetes also should be uh, uh, followed up for diabetic uh, development this uh, drug can produce water and salt retention so some patients can develop hypertension osteoporosis is very very common in a patient who is taking long standing steroids so add calcium and vitamin d along with steroids whenever possible many patients with steroids will develop severe gastritis deflacort is a safer drug in this aspect but you, you advise proton pump inhibitors for all patients who is uh, on steroids and some patients can have psychological disorders it is called as steroid psychosis very very rare com- complication of steroid now we can see many doctors give steroids morning and evening that should be given only when you are giving a replacement dose for adrenal insufficiency otherwise if you are giving it as an anti inflammatory drug only one dose is enough that should be given in the morning time you know that steroids are secreted in the early morning hours if you give night time steroids it can suppress the morning surge of steroid uh, secretion so try to avoid night dose of steroid uh, in routine treatment uh, conditions but in a patient who is having adrenal failure you have to give two times steroids otherwise in asthma copd rheumatic rheumatoid arthritis sl all these conditions you can give steroid as a single dose tablet in the morning now we'll talk about pulse therapy of steroid it is defined as an intravenous infusion of very high dose of steroid so most of the time pulse dose is given as a 1 g methyl prednisolone for 3 days this is a pulse dose given in many conditions like sle rheumatoid arthritis or severe vasculitis all these conditions we give it as a pulse dose but remember that dexamethasone is equivalent to uh, prednisolone which has got very high anti inflammatory action you can give 100 to 200 mg as a pulse dose when comparing with methyl prednisolone it, it is very very cheap Com- methyl prednisolone pulse uh, one dose of pulse may cost around 1000 rupees this one dose of pulse may cost around 15 rupees or uh, 30 rupees that is a difference so methyl prednisolone pulse is 1 g into 3 days dexamethasone pulse is around 100 to 200 mg per pulse after pulse dose you have to switch the patient to 
uh, oral steroid like you can again say dexamethasone or prednisolone. Uh, prednisolone is routinely used drug that is 1 milligram per kg and slowly taper the dose. Now in adrenal failure this is uh, the dosage is slightly different in acute adrenal failure in like in sepsis, tuberculosis, tubercular adrenalitis, so many other adrenalitis we give IV hydrocortisone that is the best drug in acute conditions 100 milligram, 100 milligram bolus and 50 milligram every 6th hourly should be given. Some doctors prefer to give as a infusion but infusion and uh, 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 intermittent dose have no difference. In chronic patients who is having chronic adrenal insufficiency, continue hydrocortisone. There is a best drug in a chronic use, hydrocortisone, BD. Only this condition you have to give uh, split doses. All other inflammatory conditions you have to give single dose because you are using it as an anti-inflammatory drug. But here you are replacing the uh, steroid which is not produced in your body. So you have to give split dose. IV acute conditions who is having hypotension you give 100 milligram bolus then 50 milligram every 6th hourly chronically you give hydrocortisone 10 milligram bd to be continuous then if there is a acute problem during this uh, treatment or a patient who is having adrenal insufficiency insufficiency is admitted with some sickness or surgery you have to increase the dose that you should remember so only this condition you split the dose and give now, when to give steroid that is very very important, uh, you should give only in the early morning hours if you are treating for a inflammatory conditions, if you are treating for a deficiency you have to give morning and evening. And when you give long term steroids it can suppress the uh, hypothalamic pituitary axis and if you suddenly withdraw this uh, steroid patient can have sudden acute weakness, vomiting all features of adrenal failure can be there because uh, sudden stoppage of uh, hypothalamic pituitary axis cannot produce any cortisol inside the body. Now we will talk about chronic steroid use side effects. You know that when we are u using steroid for a long time, our hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis will be suppressed because the cortisol level is high so this axis will be suppressed. Suddenly, if you withdraw the steroids, patient can go to acute adrenal failure. That is the most common side effect of any steroid use. So, we have to taper it and stop it. Other common side effects are patient can have obesity, patient can have stress, thinning of skin, diabetes, hypertension, cataract. So many side effects can occur uh, due to steroids. This is called as Cushing syndrome or Cushing disease. We can remember it with a mnemonic Cushing's. C stands for cortisol increased and central obesity comedones that is acne. U for urinary free cortisol is increased that is mainly in the primary Cushing's uh, disease. S stands for suppressed immunity. H stands for hypertension, hyperglycemia, hypercholesterolemia, hyperpigmentation. I stands for increased hair growth that is hirsutism and infections. N stands for neuropsychiatric manifestations like depression, insomnia, psychosis. G stands for growth arrest, especially in children. S stands for thin skin, easy bruising, purple stray over abdomen. These are the clinical features of chronic adrenaline, chronic steroid use or adrenaline insufficiency that is Cushing's. Now common indications and adverse effect of uh, chronic steroid use, again you can remember with two mnemonics, common indications are magic pole. I am not explaining that uh, again because we have already di uh, that discussed that in very detail. Glucocorticoids can produce so many uh, side effects that you can remember as glucocorticosteroid, glucocorticosteroids, glaucoma, limb muscle weakness, especially proximal muscle weakness, ulcer diseases in the uh, peptic ulcer, osteoporosis, Cushing syndrome we have explained in detail. Osteonecrosis that is a vascular necrosis of long, long bones, reduced growth especially in children, thin skin, immunosuppression with infections, cataracts, generalized edema, obesity, suppressed HPA axis we have di di discussed in detail, testicular atrophy, emotional problems like steroid psychosis, raised blood pressure, hypertension, obesity, increased hair growth, Diabetes. These are the side effects. 
we explained in detail in Cushing syndrome. Now, how to withdraw the steroids? Once you start steroid for a uh, inflammatory as an inflammatory drug in conditions like chronic diseases uh, like uh, rheumatoid arthritis, SLE and all, you want to stop it, you have to slowly taper it down. But if you are giving for asthma and COPD for two weeks, there is no need to taper. Many doctors taper during the two period time, that is not recommended. You, only if you are continuing more than two weeks, steroid requires a tapering dose. That should be done when you are using for a chronic inflammatory condition. Two things, when you suddenly stop the steroid in a patient, uh, uh, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis can suddenly fail and patient can go to symptoms of adrenal failure. Other one, suddenly the disease can, the disease flare can come back like uh, joint pains and uh, uh, renal disease in SLE or rheumatoid arthritis. So, we have to taper the steroid dose. So, we have explained in detail about hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, cortisone release, how to start steroids, different type of steroids, oral steroids, IV steroids, side effects of steroids uh, and doses of each type of steroids, when to give that early morning dose, all these things we have explained in detail. Thank you.